Let's get and be positive, shall we? Because it's that time. Just got a title. Most beautiful part of the country, the coldest part of the country. But get over it, mate. Get over it. Beautiful and cold. Come on. Let's be positive. Positive. Just stop right there. I will. No negativity. None. Let's be positive. positive. That's right. LBP. LBP, mate. Let's be positive. Positive. All right, Matt, we spoke on Friday and you're still a little prickly after the Thursday night. Get over it, mate! Are you still sulking or not? Oh, oh, I'm not sulking, but I tell you what, I do stand with Rennie in his demanding of an inquiry into this whole thing. The fact that New Zealand rugby public has non-stop defended why they won says to me... Everybody knows, mm. regardless yeah. of Ma- Mark Stafford's stopwatch antics, everybody knows you shouldn't have got the penalty. We should have won the game. Look, everybody knows. Look, I'd say, I'd say this slot is about being positive. If you had have won, I mean, just imagine what this week would have been like building up to that Bledisloe test. The tickets would have gone for gold, would they not? And so there's a kind of a, a little bit of a... Uh, because, you know, the Bledisloe Cup isn't on this one. I think as the days gone go by, I think we are feeling a little more guilt than we were on Friday morning. Yeah, I don't believe you at all. <laughs> but, I mean, what you say about the build-up, yeah. what you say about the build-up is absolutely spot on. It would have been amazing, wouldn't it? Because this would have been actually a Bledisloe Cup match too worth watching. Yeah. It really would have been. And See, after the, all this the, time, the, problem is the though, pain, it's like just more salt into the 20-year wound. Yeah, the problem is, though, is that this is what sport does to you. It just turns you into an emotional puddle, doesn't it? If your stupid team wins, you don't care about the ref. If your team loses, the only thing you care about is the ref. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. And I, I don't care about the ref anymore. One little bit of positivity, I've got to throw this out. I just received an email from Newcastle, New South Wales. Yes. You know where that is? That's where the Knights are from, Martin. Yep. You know. Have you ever been there? No, but, I mean, you live around there, wasn't it? Cessnock around there, somewhere around yeah, there? Yeah, I, I didn't live too far away from there. Cessnock, an hour or so away. Alan McRodden, Martin, we've taken Let's Be Positive across borders. Alan is loving the program. He listens to you and me every Monday. Without fail. Go on. And he also listens to my other program on Radio Sport. Live streaming. We've gone global. Okay. We're going global. Okay. The other well, just thing- a bit of positivity. And the other thing is, Martin, greyhound racing has always been dodgy. My grandfather, when he had a dog that he didn't want to win, he fooded six meat pies. <laughs> so forget about the methamphetamine. <laughs> the dog should have been in the kennels. You know that, so that's it's been dodgy forever. You can there is actually there, there there's there is a whole world out there of people and they're all over um social media and that where you can actually rescue a greyhound from you know that from the racing fraternity and apparently they're lovely pets. I see them walking around all the time around the park close to home and that and then they've got to put a bit of a muzzle on. But apparently they're they're very they're very placid. They're very docile. They're quite lazy. But if you let them off, of course they're going to run run to the heavens, aren't they? But they're actually very nice dogs. But oh. you, you never think of a greyhound as a pet, do you? No, no, they had a they were greyhound races next door to me growing up, and they had one as a pet. And um, the only thing I used to think of is if you do take a walk in the park and it does get off, yeah. and it sees a bush on freeze or something oh, like that, thinks yeah. it's a rabbit. Yeah, you know, you, you've got a bloodbath on your hands. You can't catch them. Well, the other thing is, is that you got a you got, you've got a ten k run, mate, because the thing's gonna be off, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's the time you get hold of. Let's be have, positive. You'd only have the dog for that one escape, wouldn't you? Let's be positive. <laughs> Resurrection Distillery bringing it to us too. That's Resurrection Distillery, as in you know the Resurrection on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Okay, Matt, NRL, did the Sharks, have the Sharks just totally choked this, have they? Well, it's funny, isn't it, what you see this time of year? Did you think Parramatta were going to rise to the top like they did on the weekend after week one? No, no, not at all. And so have we got the right four teams? You sent me that in a message. Have we got the right four teams in the final? I think the answer has to be yes. They're not the wrong four teams, are they? No. But is it, I, is I it ask you that because potentially the best final we could get. Well, at this time of year, it's all about playing at this time of year. Yeah. Forget about what you could have been earlier on. You know, I don't like any of the teams well, really. Well, no, I'll I don't like them. Either. I mean, but you know, what I'm thinking of is that the way the minor premiership finishes, one and two are the two best teams, and so we could potentially have one and three playing in the final. Okay, which means that the best teams, you know, the, the cream rises to the top. The the the, the thing that's important for me. 
is is that it should be bloody tough for teams five to eight to get to the grand final. You should have to do it hard. And I know everyone says, oh, the road's a lot. Well, that's because you weren't throughout the 24 regular game season as good as those guys. So it should be tougher, shouldn't it? Yeah, it's, well, it has to be tougher. I mean, the bottom line is if we wanted teams one and two after pool play in the final, we wouldn't have final. That's right. Well, we? we just go straight to a grand final, which I like to call it. So I think what makes the game better is the coin toss if you make it to the top eight. Now, very few teams ever finish seven or eight and go too far. But the point is they get the opportunity. And so if you make it to the top eight, forget about the rest of the season. If you show up during finals time and you get there, you get there. And I, I really believe that. I think it's as simple as that. I mean, the Doggies made a run at it from eight there uh, many, 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 many years ago. Didn't win. But there's the opportunity yeah. to have a few struggles through the year, maybe lose some players, maybe lose some momentum, get yourself back together, get in the final eight, and then actually play for it. Yeah. You know, and that's why a system like this works so well. It used to be a top five. Yeah, did Maybe I remember? Yeah, back to a top five. five. Yeah, I did. But yeah. I like the top eight. Yeah, I like I like the way that it, that it works as well. And and what it says to me is that three of the top four teams are there, so that obviously they are the best teams. But you've actually got that wild card South. And I like you know Latrell's comments as well. I mean, let's be positive about it. What he's doing is he's just throwing one at the pen with Panthers, isn't he? He's just throwing one early at them and saying we're not fearing you, which I think is a good tactic. Yeah, well, that's exactly right. Penrith maybe feel like VAR sitting in the best position. Should be. They were sitting there watching last weekend thinking, who do we get to beat? And yet, you see South Sydney played very well on the weekend. And they have nothing to lose. Penrith have everything to lose, don't they? You know, the Sharks have everything to lose. North Queensland, hello. Mm. Well, they're on house money, aren't they? They're on house money. They've never even played a grand final. Let's be positive about the, well, about the the Queen's funeral arrangements, obviously. But David Beckham, did you like Mm. that story sitting out there for 12 hours? I thought that was kind of cool. I loved the story. I loved the story because you and I know heaps of people that would jump in the VIP lane because uh, better than the rest of the public, they shouldn't have to wait for the Queen. And here's this guy. He's He's a global superstar. You know, he's an absolute superstar. Does he need to wait? You know what I heard him say? My old man would have thought I was an idiot if I went in the VIP lot and say, this is where I belong. Where did he come from, David Beckham? Uh, he came from the people. That's what he did. That's Didn't exactly he? it. Yep, yep. He's a London lad. He came from yep. the people. Yep. He made his fortune, but he, he, he still, to me, um, it just, it, 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 well, it just said, I'm not entitled. Yeah, that's what it said to me I'm as well. I'm not entitled. Yeah. I thought it was genuine. I, I, I mean, I like people are saying, you know, honestly, I, anyone who says... Would oh, you have done it? Well, no, I wouldn't have done it, Matt, because I'm the VIP tosser. No. You know that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have... But to exactly. wait for 12 hours... You know, the, the people that turn around and say to him, oh, or uh, smear it and say, oh, like, he's just trying to get attention. He would have done it for an hour if he was trying to get attention. You don't wait for 12 hours knowing that he didn't have anyone around him. He didn't have any minders or anything, knowing the kind of bozos that could be walking past with a shaven head and a tattooed neck who support some other team or something and have a crack at him, Right. He knew that he, the possibility of that and the fact that he just stood there in the queue and he wouldn't take selfies or anything with people because he didn't want to stop, just wanted to, I'm just what, another mourner as far as he's concerned. I thought, yeah, then I, I actually applauded him for it. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't even like the idea of a VIP line to get Well, in you've there. been in a few, I mean, mate, and you've actually say? taken advantage of it. No, own up to it. There's been times. Oh, well, occasionally, Martin. But I, I was thinking to myself, imagine if I I, I, um, I could picture you in the line, <laughs> right? Yeah, uh, no, I can't. I can't <laughs> picture you in the line. I know you'd be in the VIP. No, chair, I but, would be, mate. But, but, but no imagine question. you're in the line. Yep. Imagine the poor sob that walks up behind oh. you. And eight hours. Eight hours of, of conversation, you know. Martin. Oh, no, there's no, you trying to amuse, no, amuse yourself before you get to no, see there, the there, comments. There's no I conversation, because conversation is a two-way thing, mate. He just got eight hours of air burn. That's what it would have been. Eight That's hours. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's I just left out the one sided. <laughs> but imagine burn behind you in the queue. With all due respect. I wouldn't do it. Uh no, but but David Beckham, honestly. Yeah. Uh I didn't expect to um even see that. I wonder how many others 
of his status did it now, or would even consider doing it. Well, man, we would have heard it. about it. If, we, if there'd been others, we would have heard about it, right? Well, you're right, yeah. I mean, I'm a yeah. second rock and roll. So, so he something. stands a man alone. And you know what? He, you know, I don't believe he did it for the publicity. No, I don't. But those who are saying he did it for the publicity probably now wish they did it for the publicity, if you know what I mean. Mm. Because it's paid dividends for him. We're talking about it here. Yeah. It makes him seem like a man of the people, even though he's well above the rest of us. But at the end of the day... Eight hours yeah. to give a little nod to the coffin on your way past, off you go. That's it. There's, there's almost, I mean, I, people are saying it's, it's, it's being part of history. And, you know, the opera has been there 70 years. She's probably met more leaders, had more conversations with important people than almost anyone else. On the planet. Ever. No question. You know, if you, if you, if you have to think about it, came here 10 times. How many Went boring things did she have to do? How many, in this country? how many boring people has she met in her life? The poor thing. How many times did she have to shake hands and sit there and exchange words and go, I just, really, you're the most tedious twat I've ever met and I've got to sit here and dink cups with you, you know? I mean, that, I mean she, that, that, she deserves respect for that because she's got more patience than the rest of us put together, mate. You wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. How did she make it through all those years without a misstep? Yeah. You don't know her political opinions. She's um, yeah, you're right. Uh, she's always appeared. Look, I'm not a big monarchist. I couldn't care less. No, it doesn't, I, I don't want to be a republic necessarily. I don't care either way. But to hold yourself with that amount of grace every time you're out in public, there's something with this worldwide reaction about this woman that we may never see again. Yeah, well said, mate. You, you know 100%, no way... In the rest of his time, Prince Charles can no. pull off anything no. even close to what his mother did. And in fact, he snapped at a pen the other day. She, she would never have snapped at a pen, would she? What a Maybe great a way to phone, mate. Yeah. Go on. Let's be positive, Matt. Thank you so much for that. Out of Twizel, Resurrection Distillery. Jumpy's Facebook page, Resurrection Distillery.